We can close off tonight's episode, finishing with the NAIA slate and uh, talking with Jimmy, uh, joined here with Matt Schwarzler, of course. And Matt, talking with Jimmy earlier on, uh, the D3 slate, not that there wasn't good football, it just maybe wasn't the most exciting football that we've seen this year. Uh, It definitely was not. I'm trying to be nice about it. Uh, This week in the NAIA was, I think, quite the opposite. I think you would agree. Quite, yeah, Yeah. quite the opposite. Um, We had a slew of... What you, I mean, yeah, what you could call upsets. Uh, a lot of good stuff happened across the NAI. We are not getting away from the frontier. I've been warning everybody. I've been telling everybody all season, this garbage with the frontier is going to happen. And the first <laughs> game we're going to talk about, Montana Western at Southern Oregon is exactly what I'm talking about. There's a second case of this that we'll get to later. Uh, but Southern Oregon, uh, 14th ranked Southern Oregon at home, pulling off the upset against fourth ranked Montana Western. And in 2826, absolute thriller uh, on both sides of the ball. Michael Palandry, who I said has been playing like one of the best players in the country, had, uh, you know, 22 for 35, uh, yep. 371 yards, three touchdowns. And on the other side, Gunnar Yates is also playing out of his mind right now, running back for Southern Oregon. 31 attempts, 154 yards and two touchdowns. Absolutely unbelievable offensive performance from both of these guys playing like two of the top guys in the country. Um, But Southern Oregon, man, they came to play. They came out swinging. They took the lead early. And this was a game that Montana Western had to claw back into in the fourth quarter uh, to even have a shot in. Um, So they were fighting. But, man, Southern Oregon for three and a half quarters pretty much dominated this game. Yeah, no, 100%. I think, you know, you pull up the tape here and you see uh, just about going into half – Western, they lead this thing 10-7, and the Raiders are able to get a touchdown with literally just seconds left on the clock. And I think that was a big kind of momentum deal uh, for this Southern Oregon team. Uh, you go into halftime, then 14-10, to that's a big-time difference. And uh, they would bounce back and score and relatively quickly uh, and do the same. So now you go 21-10, and that's where you start to talk about uh, this is a team that the game maybe started to get away from them a little bit. And, and you talk about Yates specifically. We're getting to a point in the season now where where there is no surprise factor. And you Mm -hmm. see some of the plays that he makes here. (laughs) There's no surprise factor that comes with the back at this point in the season. The other team knows exactly what they're getting themselves into, which makes the stat lines that he's putting up all the more impressive, I think. And that's stiff arm. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Oh, that was that was terrible. (laughs) That was disgusting. Um, but there was a lot of big-time <laughs> plays uh, on this offense here. You see the screen pass uh, out to Yates once again, just making people look like peewee football players uh, in many different uh, senses of the word. But, but no, this is a big-time win for this this Raiders team, and this was our, our Game of the Week selection. And you look through what they've done in this first just about quarter of the season. You open up, you have two games that are very much kind of a cupcake warm-up type schedule, and they would never say that, but I get to because I'm not on the team, which is kind of the benefit of that. <laughs> yeah, um, But then sure. you go and you have a homestand with number nine, the College of Idaho, 45-27. Now you take down number four, Montana Western, and now you're on the road at number 16, Montana Tech, who we'll talk about shortly. They have an opportunity to put together one of the best runs in the country at this point throughout this, uh, this point in the season. Absolutely. And this Southern Oregon team, man, over at NAIF ball, me and Corey have been talking about this all off season. This Southern Oregon team is a sleeping giant, like just definition of the program. Like they were super good in the early 2010s and they dominated the NAI and they just kind of slowed down. We've been waiting for them to kick it back into gear. We saw signs of life last year where they started winning games again, but man, this team is on an absolute roll light right now. I would hate to play them. Montana Tech, obviously, which we'll talk about uh, after the loss that they had to kind of going on the back foot. Southern Oregon has a chance to go on a run that we haven't seen in the frontier before because teams don't survive that sort of gauntlet usually. Um, But the fact that they have gone through Montana Western and College of Idaho already, already, excuse me, it's a great sign for them. 100%. And you look at kind of the stats from this one, I think something that stands out, if you're Southern Oregon, you're able to hold this Bulldog offense to 67 yards on the ground. And this is a team that's averaging about a buck 70 per game. Like this is not a team that relies on their threat through the air. Now they've been very proficient at that and they still finished the day with 438 yards of offense, which is crazy. Uh, But they were able to really limit them on the ground, which obviously is a great recipe for success. And then uh, you come down and when it comes to like time and possession and some of the other key metrics, I think are really important. Also, defensively for Southern Oregon, holding them to 2 of 12 from third down is, uh, 
I yeah. believe, quite the feat on the day. And I, those are some of the things that jumped out for me in this one. Um, looking through it, nothing else too crazy. But yeah, the, the, the air attack for this Montana Western team definitely kept them in the game. Big time win for that Southern Oregon squad. And I think now they, uh, deservingly so, are getting the respect that uh, maybe they expected a little earlier on. So it'll be interesting to see what that game entails. Hopefully talk about that later on in the week, them and Montana Tech. Before we talk about uh, them out there, let's talk about Baker at Benedictine, 16 at 13. What did you see in this one, man? Yeah, this was an absolute brawl of a game. Truman Ulesgard and Jackson Dooley, both top-end quarterbacks that we've talked about before, kind of having a rough day. The defense has definitely showed out. Both of them had two interceptions apiece, and Truman Ulesgard actually got pulled uh, at one point in this game. Sam Hedgeman, it's two Gs, so I hope it's Hedgeman, if not it's Hegman. I'm sorry, yeah, Sam. Yeah. Um, this is the first time we've really seen Sam in any serious playing time. I know Truman had two picks, and from what the play sequencing looked like, I don't think he got hurt. So unless somebody has more insider information than I do, I'm pretty sure he got pulled. Uh, which is really interesting considering he's been leading this team for the better part of a couple of years now. Yeah. Um, but man, Benedictine, this was this was one where Benedictine came out strong. The blows got traded back and forth. Baker kind of getting themselves back into it in the fourth, but Benedictine putting up 24 points in the first half is going to set you up for success. They only scored three points in the second half. It was clearly enough. Their defense held on like they needed to. I would start to question a little bit benedict installing out that much in the second half baker mm -hmm. is a fantastic defense so it makes sense but it's a makes me raise an eyebrow a little bit but a very very good win for benedicting all respect given to them this is a very good baker team that they beat no i would uh, i would definitely agree there and i think uh part of that equation as far as uh, benedict is concerned is uh a, kind of a maybe unsung hero for this baker squad how about the punter six punts uh, for 270 yards, and looking here, that would be uh, a little bit of a combination, but mostly Joshua Gonzalez, man, averaging over 50 mm -hmm. yards a boot. And that is something that is going to hold your offense when you're giving them quite literally almost the longest field imaginable. Um, so shout mm -hmm. out to him. It feels like looking at the box score, I think I get to tune into this one, but seems like he definitely had a big day. Five punts, uh, a long of 58. One of them was a touchback, but he had three pinned inside the 20. So when yep. you talk about an offense maybe struggling in the second half, I'm imagining looking at this that having to deal with 80-plus yard drives is something that is uh, is pretty intimidating and something that could be hard to overcome for this Ravens offense. This Raven offense, excuse me. Um, by the way, some of the best uniforms in the NAIA, I would say. Absolutely. Um, as far as Absolutely. some guys who stood out defensively, Zach Kramer for Baker, 10 mm -hmm. tackles, had a sack, four TFLs on the day, some of those things that I think jump off the page uh, for you. But um, for Benedictine, there's a couple guys that registered some TFLs as well. And you talk about some of those takeaways through the air. Uh, those guys stood out for sure. But um, another great matchup, and I think we've come to expect – from both these squads and, and what we've learned, I think throughout this is that Benedictine has found a way to win in a lot of these close, close games. And I think what's, what's telling about them is that they have found a way to do it in different ways, which is, mm -hmm. uh, which is really good for them because like you said, maybe they're, they're, particular bread and butter their usual way of winning uh maybe didn't get it done for him this time and they have the one blemish on the record this season against Grandview but uh if you're gonna lose to one team I think that's not a not a terrible one yeah certainly not the end of the world it's that quality win that we always joke about at upper levels of football uh right but I mean if your only loss on the season is to a top four program in the past however many years uh they're doing all right again both these defenses are just so good I'm curious to see what Baker does from here on out. Is Sam going to play more? Is Truman Dutt like, what's the deal? I don't know what they're going to do with that. I'm very curious to see how they respond after that. No, I'm also curious. I actually didn't, I didn't really know too much about that admittedly. So that'll be interesting to see what mm -hmm. they do uh, moving forward. But let's move on. Talk more frontier here and the uh, cannibalism going on out West. And that would be Montana <laughs> Tech, College of Idaho. The Yotes end up taking this one. It took a little bit of extra free football in order to do it. 45-37, Idaho takes this one in front of almost 4,000 people there. Yeah, absolutely huge crowd, man. Frontier football is just different, dude. I'm telling you. 
those 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 I Rocky can already Mountain hear the schools. comments too of like, well, what else do people have to do on a Saturday? <laughs> yeah. I mean, you could that's like the argument for everything else with right? every popular college football team. So you're not wrong. Like I'm not it's it's a correct <laughs> statement, but um uh, yeah, I mean they it's just different out there, man. Also, can we mention this game ended 45 to 37? The score going into the fourth quarter was 17 to 13. Yeah. And there was only one overtime, by the way. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so uh, 44 points were scored in the fourth quarter combined. Yeah. So that that's cool. <laughs> Big fan of that. When um, you look if... at, dude, you look at the Yotes in the in the fourth quarter alone, they score uh, Kreps as a touchdown pass to Peters, and he actually mm-hmm. scored uh, three touchdowns, I guess, if the way you – the way you counted, he throws one with 10 minutes left in the fourth. Six minutes later, he runs one in. And then three minutes later, he runs another in. So you're talking about back-to-back-to-back scores from this College of Idaho team that uh, at one point was down 31-19. That three-score swing brings them up six, and that is a, a quite the big swing and kind of turn of events. Um, a touchdown with 47 seconds left from uh, Lander Smith there. That would even things up for Tech. And um, the kick ended up being a big part of this because it was 37-37. All you got to mm-hmm. do is go for one, and this game is iced. And that yep. kick, uh, not to put him under the bus, but from Dylan Root, that kick is no good, and that's what ends up forcing this overtime and ultimately costing the game. Yeah. Um, it was just – I like. I feel like looking at the box score and reading these stats and reading the play-by-play, like just looking at all this, Blake Thielen, 22 completions, 387 yards, three touchdowns, two picks. Andy Peters on the other side passing the ball, 32 completions, 419 yards, two touchdowns, one interception. Mm. I mean, this was just offensive overload. There was so much happening. Andy Peters also rushing for 90 yards and two touchdowns. Blender Smith, Montana Tech, a guy that we've talked a lot about before, was averaging 6.2 yards a carry on 111 yards and two touchdowns. The stars were out for this one. Like everybody was playing their best football. Yeah. Both defenses were forcing turnovers and balling out. Wyatt Alexander for Montana Tech, six catches for 219 yards and a touchdown. And not to mention 200 yard receivers on the College of Idaho side and Travis uh, Marrero and Tommy Hauser. I mean, my goodness, this is, this is as good as a college football game as you could have asked for last week. And that is, I would throw that in with D1. I would throw that at every level. This game was just phenomenal and everybody like rose to the challenge. And it's unfortunate that both teams couldn't win because they were both playing so well and it was so (laughs) sick, but there's got to be a winner and there's got to be a loser. So College of Idaho sneaking out a very impressive win to get themselves back on track after a couple tough conference losses. 100%, 100%, man, 100%. We'll move on um, to one more that I know we want to talk about a little more in depth. Another game in which we had some free football. Marion taking on Taylor, 35-34. The Knights take this one, my friend. Yeah, this is, this game told us, told me at least, a lot about Marion. This is a Marion team that I, this year in my own polls, have been putting them in like that 15 to 20 range. They were They had to replace a lot this year going into the season. I wasn't confident as to where they'd be. And Taylor's a very good football team. Don't get me wrong. Taylor is, this was their first loss on the year. They were undefeated going into this game. Taylor team that has honestly been on the rise uh, this season uh, has been winning a lot more than what we've seen recently. Um, But this is a game Marion usually can take care of pretty easily. Um, and they, they didn't do that. And credit to Taylor. They played fantastic. I wouldn't even say Marion played bad. I don't want this to be like Marion's terrible. They're still a top 25 team. Absolutely. At the end of the day and they're undefeated and they have good wins. Yep. But I, I don't know. Tristan Polk on the day, you know, you have 241 yards and a touchdown passing, but three picks that just doesn't bode well. Now, granted when Keegan LaBelle has a hundred or 261 yards rushing yeah. and three touchdowns, you don't need to be that efficient through the air. I mean, you're averaging 10 yards a carry. He averaged 10 yards a carry yesterday. Mm-hmm. And Taylor, on the other side, had a runner, 143 yards, three touchdowns. Dakota Sonich, 15.9 yards a carry. Not a whole lot of uh, running defense to go around in this one. But I, it just, Marion, I'm still, I'm trying to get a feel for where they're at right now. 
I feel like this Taylor game and Taylor's performance kind of showed me that Marion is still vulnerable, but they haven't lost. So I can't knock them. You know, it's one of those things that like, you really feel like they're in one spot, but they just, they keep winning. So can't discredit them yet. Um, very curious to see how the rest of Marion's season goes from here. Uh, I could, I feel like go a lot of different directions, but for the most part, I mean, they have Indiana Wesleyan coming up next week. That's the big matchup, yeah. number six. So we're going to figure it out very quick. We're going to figure it out very quickly. And if not, you know, all of it as Reams after that, they still have to play ranked St. Xavier, still at the moment ranked St. Francis of Illinois. There's a lot of chances for us to get answers about this team. And I'm very curious. This Taylor game really kind of, um, how do you say, really like tuned me in to like, okay, there's some weird stuff going on with this team. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you. I hear so. you. And I think what stands out here for me looking at this, you go into the fourth quarter, about seven minutes left, and that, uh, uh, excuse me, that, uh, there it is, the Taylor drive into the fourth ends in an interception, and that ended up being kind of a big swing for them there because it felt like they had – this game was very back and forth. You did not really yes. have cases until late where there were teams scoring multiple. It was – slugfest where one team would score and another would answer back. So that's those are the cases with the turnovers, I think, are uh, are some of the biggest indicators. But one other game I wanted to semi-highlight, and we had posted a, a tweet about it, is uh, the Eastern Oregon final over uh, Rocky Mountain mm. 23-20 in yeah. that one. Um, and I know we had put out, like I said, the tweet about it here. But um, you look at the the play from, from their quarterback in Glasper, and he had a hell of a day. Uh, against Rocky Mountains. So we're talking about football out west there. Um, and in that kind of performance, I wanted to make sure I highlighted in that. It